Welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Founded in 1938, Bible Tracks seeks to take the gospel to all the world. Our teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. For more information about Bible Tracks, go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. And now our teacher, Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. We give the same title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesday. Notice the way I'm saying that word tract. It's spelled T-R-A-C-T, Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Now, we do that title because on our Tuesday broadcast, we willfully set to the side our Bible studies that we're doing right now. Typically, we're going through the book of Ephesians, but on our Tuesday broadcast, whatever study we're in, we set it aside so that we can focus on one thing, helping each other sharpen our focus and sharing the gospel and giving out gospel tracts. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, declaring the sinfulness of all men, declaring the love of God for all men, and the plan of God for all men, that all men might be saved. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The salvation of God for sinners is in his own dear Son. That's why he died on the cross. We use our Tuesday broadcast to hopefully sharpen our skills and hopefully deepen the burden on our heart for the lost that are around us. We're going to deal with the issue of pride today, and my Bible is open to the book of the Psalms, Psalm 36. One verse, verse 11, is what I'm going to be reading here in just a moment. But the other day, I was on an airplane flying to a missions conference, going to share there and encourage the hearts of the people towards worldwide missions. I had about a a two-and-a-half-hour flight, and I sat next to a uh, 30-year-old young man named Nathan, and he had uh, uh, noticed my Bible was out. I was going over some notes. I wasn't quite satisfied with the sermon I was going to preach that, that night. It was a Friday night. I was flying. And as soon as I landed, I was going to go to the church and begin to preach. I wasn't quite satisfied with my message preparation yet. Some things were still not settled in my soul. And so my Bible was out. And Nathan leans over and says, that's an interesting book. And that began our conversation. (laughs) Needless to say, I got no sermon preparation, but I sure got to share the gospel. But in the process, guess what? I called Nathan a jerk. You heard me correctly. I don't know that I've ever referred to a lost sinner before as a jerk, but I did that day. In a moment, I'll come back and explain to you why. I held up this gospel tract a moment ago. Friend, this gospel tract is one of the over 40 tracts that's in our sample packet that I want to give to you free of charge. At the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on and tell you three different ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Please do that. Have pen and paper ready and give us your name and address. When you give us that, in the next business day's mail, we'll mail you out free of charge. That sample packet contained over 40 gospel tracts. Each one tells the same gospel message. It just comes at the gospel message from different vantage points. But, oh, here is a great, great gospel tool simply called The Gift. Now, what's so impactful about this is the fact that, number one, it's beautiful in its cover. Number two, it's not that long, and the print is decent size. It won't take a person more than, oh, three minutes at most to read this. But the gospel is so clear, and it makes so very, very valid the idea that we need salvation to be a gift because we cannot earn it. We cannot do anything to merit God's salvation. We are saved by God's grace, not through our works. And this simple, powerful gospel tract is so quality. It's just one you need. 
please get the sample packet. This one will be in there. Read the tracks. The tracks will help you sharpen your own ability to tell the gospel, but then you're going to find great tools by which you can give out to people the gospel of Christ, even when you can't verbally tell them the gospel. Well, let me get back to Nathan there on the airplane. We talked, and lo and behold, Nathan's mother taught Sunday school. Now, it wasn't in a Bible-preaching church at all. And a matter of fact, his grandmother had taught Sunday school as well in the same church. Again, not a Bible-preaching church, but he knew the Bible stories. He knew a lot of the stories of Jesus. He knew that Jesus loved him. He knew that he was a sinner. Nathan was on his way to go visit his girlfriend over the weekend. In the process of our conversation, and again, we had two and a half hours, you can become pretty good friends when you're strapped to the seat in an airplane next to a person for two and a half hours. Well, we became good friends. There was a warmth between us, and to help bring out his sinfulness, I challenged him about what his relationship would be to his girlfriend that very weekend, and he knew he was going to be committing sin. He knew it was sin. He knew he was a sinner. But he thought he was an agnostic. There wasn't enough information. Nathan was well-read. We challenged one another. I gave to him some apologetic things. And after going through this and answering a number of questions using some apologetic skills, I just got right down to the simple gospel plan, laid it out for him. And he said, well, I don't know if I can believe that or not. That's when I called him a jerk. I said to him, well, when I called him that, he backed his head up and said, wow, I've never had any religious person call me that before. I said, but let me tell you why you were a jerk. God gave you a grandmother who loves you, and she's told you the stories of Jesus. God gave you a mother. She loves you. She has told you the stories of Jesus, and God has had you sit next to me for two and a half hours, and I've told you about Christ and your need for him as salvation, and you are going to brush Jesus off. You, friend, are a jerk. You, friend, uh, may not ever have this opportunity ever, ever again. Well, We remained friends as we got off the airplane, but Nathan, well, I gave him a track, but Nathan never did receive Christ as Savior, and he is a foolish young man, 30-year-old, smart, intelligent, foolish, spiritually foolish young man. The reason he would not receive Christ was a key reason he told me was it would change his life before his friends. They would think him foolish. It was his human pride that gets in the way. With that, let's talk about pride here for a moment. Pride is a great hindrance not only to sinners, but to you and I who know Christ and are wanting to be gospel tellers. Pride gets in the way of our witnessing, and it can manifest itself in different ways. Pride can stop us from doing things that we know we ought to do, and pride can make us do things that we know we shouldn't be doing. Pride can get in the way of our telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ in these very simple ways. Number one, embarrassment. We don't want to look uh, down, be looked down on by others. We don't want to feel embarrassed in front of others. So we just, in our pride, don't say anything. We don't want to be ridiculed. We fear those uh, that we're going to talk to about Jesus. They're going to talk bad about us, make fun of us. In the these days that you and I live, honest Christianity, genuine Christianity, is often belittled and everybody chimes in. It's attacked and we don't want the belittling and attacking to happen to us. Pride can show up when Satan keeps us thinking and focused about past experiences where uh, that were just plain out bad for us. When we were up in front and talking and it turned on bad and Satan helps us focus there. Rather than us learning from our bad experiences, Satan whispers in our ears to protect ourselves from another bad experience. That brings me to my verse here, Psalm 13. 36 verse 11 says this, let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. I like the first part of that. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Oh friend, 
there is Satan who is the enemy. He's the father of lies, and he's the began with pride. He wants to put his foot on our neck and be a weight there and his pride to stop us. He wants us to be people that are proud. Psalm 73 verse 6 is a verse that years ago I read in a book on witnessing where a man says, uh, uh, challenging people about their pride. Psalm 73 6 says in part, pride compass them as a chain. Well, pride does compass or and goes around the neck of a lost sinner. That's the context of Psalm 73. But pride can be a chain and a weight on our neck. Remember these well-known verses about pride. Listen, uh, it's Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Proverbs 6 says, familiar verse, six things doth the Lord hate, a seven are an abomination. The first one is a proud look. Oh, friend, Satan loves to use our pride against us And the last thing he wants for us to do is be telling people the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he will use pride to have us debate inside of ourselves about whether we ought to say something at a particular moment or not. And by the time the debate's over, the opportunity's gone. How does Satan deal and how how does a believer deal with pride issues and how do we overcome them to become an effective gospel witness? Let me tell you four things real quickly. Number one, be daily developing and and deepening your love relationship with Jesus. Daily developing and deepening your love relationship with Jesus. Why? When our love for Christ is maturing, the Bible says in 1 John, perfect love casts out fear. That word perfect. Perfect means mature love. A mature relationship casts out fear. Number two, confess our pride and repent of it. That's what we do with all sin. Pride is sin. Number three, uh, see giving out tracts as an act of obedience. We've been called to give the gospel to every creature. And John 15 says that if we love Jesus, we'll do what he commands. It'll deepen our friendship. And then number four, we must replace pride with personal humility and glorying in the Lord. You and I need to be memorizing verses that speak about the benefits of being humble before our God and others, and we need to be reading and rereading the gospel accounts where Jesus was humbled himself before men. Dear soul winner, you and I can be stopped so quickly in our tracks by the sin of pride. God hates pride, you know that. Jesus humbled himself and took on flesh and dwelt among us. Philippians chapter 2, he humbled himself and was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Our master humbled himself. Our master knew that people were going to belittle him, yet he put himself in the way to be belittled. But in the process, yes, our Savior was belittled and spat upon and so on. But how many people came to receive him because in his humility, he offered them everlasting life. Let's be like Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our Bible Tracks, please write us at P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702, or call us at 309-828-6888. You can also visit our website at BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.